Hey -o, everybody, Haku here with my double review for The Walking Dead Season 8, Episode 14, and Episode 15. Uh, I'm a bit late on both of these, but I'm trying to get this up before the uh, finale tonight. Um, but I'm a bit behind both because of stuff, well, because of working on stuff for YouTube and stuff outside of it. Uh, but with 814, I was a little behind. I wasn't like in a rush to do the video as compared to other videos I was making. Uh, because I didn't really like 814 that much. There were things I liked, things I didn't like, but it was generally a really, really mixed bag for me. Uh, 815, I'm going to be a lot more positive about. Um, yeah, quite a bit more positive about. Uh, but yeah, either way, I'm going to go through them both, part by part, discuss them scene by scene. No special order or anything that I'm going in this time. It's just going to be uh, straight chronological. So uh, either way, let's start talking about 814 first. Um, we get to see how Jada survives the attack. I thought that was all well and good. And uh, she now has Negan all tied up prisoner and all that. And she lives in a nice room. Very, very clean to be living in a junkyard. Um, and again, it sort of leads more into the theory that what was this place? Why on earth would a garbage dump have a helipad and solar panels? So it just adds more into what is the mystery behind these trash people? Uh, and uh, I was thinking too throughout the episode, I was like, you know, Jadis went from like weird wasteland person to looking kind of cute in like a very short time. Uh, but back at the hilltop, Ezekiel, then we have a scene where he's asking Carol to go join the search, for, or to join him on the search for Henry and all that. Uh, and then he kind of accuses her of giving up on things and says that's the coward's way, she's a coward, whatever. Um, I love that Tara has a scene with Daryl where she's saying, you know, Dwight let me live, he kind of saved me. And I'm not saying that I'm totally square with him or anything, but I am saying that if you're planning on going out and getting revenge or anything, then that's just for you. It's not for me. So I like that for Tara's character. Um, and uh, then next, Michonne tells Rick to read Carl's letter, but Rick is on a stupid trip. Um, then Carol and Morgan go out to search for Henry, because Carol's not letting Morgan go out there himself. He's batshit insane. Um, <laughs> again, like I said before, Morgan going crazy for the millionth time, uh, so it isn't really as impactful. Um, Rosita brings up to uh, Daryl and Maggie that Eugene is probably making ammunition for the saviors, so it might be good to uh, take him out uh, one way or the other. Um, Jadis keeps checking the time when we see the scenes with her, and she gets everything ready to burn Lucille in this... Uh, what? What is it? Why am I losing... Wheelbarrow. <laughs> Wheelbarrow. I was like, what? Why am I losing my words here? But she gets ready to burn Lucille and all that. In this scene, Negan says what the shit a lot this episode, and this entire episode was a bunch of what the shit. So, uh, he, he's very much my thoughts while watching. Um, she prepares all that. Rick heads out. Uh, Morgan and Carol end up getting separated while they're searching, and uh, because Morgan decides to go straight towards this herd of walkers, saying, you know this is where the savior's trail leads and I gotta chase them down. So Rick and Morgan bump into each other and uh, kind of team up once Rick heads out. Uh, Jadis comes back with a walker cart and I have no idea on what the real reason for that is because its head is like trapped up so I don't think maybe it was supposed to just scratch Negan to death and that was her plan to kill him but it, it just seemed kind of weird and I didn't really get the reason totally. Um, but Negan ended up getting a gun a flare and the some personal photos of hers out of her bag again all of this getting it out somehow while he's still trapped there and he's not like a big threat with all that but he has a gun so he's kind of a threat and overall it was just kind of I don't want to say weird and cartoonish maybe cheesy um, but it was very weird it was a big what the shit moment especially the helicopter comes but the flare during her tussle with Negan is put out so she can't flag down the helicopter and even though they're both kinda clearly visible I would think the helicopter was pretty close it leaves and uh, just books it out of there so she's pretty distraught like maybe they think she's dead and they're not coming back or something or maybe they come at a certain time and she has to be there ready for them no clue. Uh, but yeah, again, that's just more of the mystery of what the hell this place could be. 
and I would honestly think that Negan would want to know more than he does. He kind of says, I have bigger fish to fry, I need to get back to the sanctuary for now when he does leave, but I would have figured that seeing an actual helicopter, I don't think anybody's curiosity would be so weak that they would leave that. Um, Because that's some crazy shit. Either way, Rick and Morgan get captured by the saviors that left. Um, Other than Jared, though, I saw this brought up, the actors they used to portray the random saviors here weren't the same ones they used to portray the random prisoners. So, basically, it's all these prisoner faces you've been seeing, these are just random other saviors, random other people, but we're supposed to believe they're the same people. It just seems like a lazy oversight. But either way, um... So that all happens, and then they slaughter the good saviors that free them after they take out the walkers, and I don't know. I feel like my family has hated Rick for a while now watching the show. They think he's a really poorly, just a bad character, poorly written character. Um, And man, I think this might be the point where Rick has lost me for good to the point where, like... We're seeing Negan constantly humanized again and again and again, and then Rick make terrible decisions that don't always follow logically. Like him killing them, I somewhat get, but at this point in the story, it feels like a weird time to have him just slaughter some saviors that let him live. It seems like a really weird place in the story for that. Maybe he would struggle over whether or not he should, but I felt like this was the point in the story where he probably should have let them live. It would have made a lot more sense for his character, uh, especially letting them live than reading Carl's letter and then being affirmed that what he did was the right decision, rather than sort of being, uh, sort of realizing that, ah, by Carl's measures, it's the wrong decision, but I killed them anyway because it maybe made me feel better. I, I just think that Rick... Again, I see where he's had a lot of poorly written moments that don't logically follow, but this is probably the biggest one for me that may have totally broken me off his side where I'm like, why do I want this guy to win? He's kind of an asshole. So uh, it was important seeing him with the scene with the broken mirror and Morgan and saying, I saved you because my son was there. And now Rick doesn't have his son, so maybe he sees that he's going to become like Morgan without his son. It's just such a weird dynamic where I'm used to a lot of really good shows having things where everything a character says or does is important and makes sense, and you may not know it at the moment, but later on it logically follows, and they're just... The Walking Dead sometimes doesn't have that. It just sometimes has things that are off. They don't really make sense. They just wanted to look cool or something, and this episode really, really struggled with that. Uh, Negan gets freed, though. Jada stays behind. Carol finds and saves Henry, which is good. Again, they're calling back by using the same place that uh, we last saw Sophia alive at. Um, They're using that with uh, that scene. It was really cool seeing a kid actually live and survive, and it sort of tells Carol that what she told him, you can go out and not have to die. Um, Carol gets back and tells Ezekiel that she lost herself before when she lost her child, but then she um, then she found herself, a better version of herself, and maybe if she loses herself again, she can find herself again. Uh, Morgan returns and tells Henry that he avenged his brother, and then goes and cries alone. Um, Negan picks someone up, and that's left a mystery for now, but uh, I was actually guessing it was Gregory. A lot of people were guessing it was Laura, and we see how that ended up. Um, Then at the very end, Rosita and Daryl plan to take out Eugene, and Rick brings out Carl's letter to start reading it. Uh, So yeah, episode as a whole, they're making a lot of characters really, really unlikable, mostly Rick. Um, Rick finally lost me, I think. His character journey with Carl's death has been very, very bungled, because, again, me being used to everything making logical sense, everything following, having a purpose, everything a character does comes in to play some sort of role. This seems like... <laughs> it's, it seems like Carl was killed off because they didn't feel like having the actor. Um, like, ah, there are a million different stories, and I don't know any of that um, because I wasn't personally there, but 
it seems like Carl dying at the point he died doesn't make logical sense for most of the characters' journeys, and especially Rick's, considering that Rick hasn't really changed much in a good way, or changed in the way that you would think the death would affect him. Um, and it's not that anything surprising is necessarily bad, it's that it just seems so very off. It seems so very just bungled and done wrong, like they don't know what they're doing with Rick's journey, so they're just sort of playing it by year and, uh, I don't know, just sort of winging it. It feels like Rick's story right now is they're, they're just winging it for the second half of the season. Um, so that that's kind of hurting the story for me. And uh, I don't know, this episode was like the biggest ordeal of that where Rick just seemed all over the place as a character. Uh, also, the episode, like I said, at times it was a bit cheesy. And overall, it was just a, a weird story that was told. Um, so I would say that... I'm going to give it five walker carts out of ten. <laughs> Again, so weird. Um, so five walker carts out of ten. Then uh, 8.15. Let's talk about 8.15. Much better episode. We get to see what was actually, or hear, what was actually in Carl's letter. That was good. And I love how um, Carl's talking about uh, he remembers the walks he took with his dad and stuff. And to do that again, make the world a place like that again. And I love how, as that was happening, we have Michonne walking with Judith. So that all makes sense. Uh, Simon spares Gregory back at the sanctuary, and I have no idea how Gregory made it there, but none of those saviors with guns and stuff did. But either way, uh, the Oceansiders leave Aaron out in the woods to die, because they're like, if he wants to stay here and keep trying to convince us, if he wants to die in the woods, that's on him. Uh, Eugene suspends Gabriel from the line sorting bullets because he finds out that Gabriel was trying to sabotage things. Uh, then Eugene gets taken, kidnapped by Rosita and Daryl. Um, Negan talks to Dwight, says, keep it on the down low that I'm back or whatever, and um, then has a meeting with all the lieutenants where he reveals that I believe Simon was the leader before Negan was, and Simon was the one that made the call that um, he killed Oceanside's men, and he's like, you know, when you were in charge of things, you did some pretty sick shit. So uh, Negan tells him to kneel, and then he spares him. Uh, then he commends Dwight after everybody else leaves on doing what it takes to survive, and Negan here again just playing them all, seeing how they all react to things, because basically most of his high-ranking guys are dead or have betrayed him. So uh, he's being put with his back against the wall. Um, I liked when uh, Rosita and Daryl with, were with Eugene. Rosita finally snapping at him after all this time, being like, I tried to train you to fight. Me and Abraham protected you. We all protected you all this time. We were your friends. And you just gave up and betrayed your friends for the sake of yourself that easily. Just uh, him being able to do it that easily. So, uh, yeah, I think at first he was like, I'm just doing it for my safety, but now I think Eugene has got to the point where, as a good guy, he may be unredeemable. He, I think, is, uh, I think he's completely on the bad side of things and might not be, even if he comes back over to the good guys, it would only be for survival. So I think Eugene might be too far gone. And he makes a bullshit escape that doesn't make any sense, because how on earth could you get under a pile of ash without any of the ash looking like it was disturbed or piled on top of you? So uh, that, that was very, very, again, not realistic in any sort of way. Um, that was handled pretty poorly. Um, then uh, what happens now? Uh, Dwight then makes a map and a message explaining Negan's plan for Rick. Uh, Simon shows up and tells him to meet him out in the courtyard, and anybody who is uh, preparing to stage a coup, anyone who wants to take down Negan, they'll all meet there. So uh, then we get to Aaron. He's fighting off walkers in the rain. He tells um, the Oceanside people who show up that they need to fight. Uh, they can't just keep going on with this mentality forever. Uh, and again, this kind of somewhat disappoints me because, again, I'm used to all the characters' actions, their words and stuff, and good shows having meaning and all that. But Aaron doesn't really have any particular connection to make this... Like, maybe if it was Tara and a big part of her character arc was 
she was the first one to find Oceanside, and she was going to make them see what they need to do and form this connection. But Aaron didn't really have any connection whatsoever with them, so his actions here and going this far to get them to help rather than going out and fighting himself just doesn't make a lot of sense for the character. And again, it seems like they're just trying to wing it and find some way to throw Oceanside into this. Uh, so it doesn't really have any deep meaning or connection. Uh, Dwight sells out the coup and ends up uh, leaving them to their deaths. Negan challenges Simon to a fight to the death. And I love Negan's anger with this fight to the death where he's angry because he thinks that Simon has driven everyone else so far that they aren't going to listen to him anymore, all the non-savior people. He's driven them to the point where they're not going to listen to him anymore, so now he has to kill them. He has to go through with Simon's uh, plan of extermination. So I really, really like that throughout this journey, Negan hated the way Simon did things. He viewed every life as a resource, but now he's sort of, in his anger, become Simon. He's planning to do the exact things that Simon was going to do. Uh, Gregory then makes it to the hilltop with Dwight's message, um, and we find out that Laura sold Dwight out and that the entire plan was fake to lead Rick and the rest into a trap. So um, that's all fake. Dwight's now captured. Eugene returns to the factory all pissed off and saying, we're going to make these bullets as best we can. Um, we're actually going to get the order done and then some. Uh, Simon, his walker, gets chained up at the sanctuary, so even after death he's working for Negan. Uh, Mich Michonne reads uh, Carl's letter to Negan, and uh, then Negan vows to kill them all because he feels like he doesn't have a choice anymore. It's gone too far. Uh, I thought it was a good episode, mostly because of all the characters that they're kind of bungling and doing things that don't make sense. Simon was such an interesting character, not just because the actor had a really good performance, but his character, even though I completely disagree with him and think he's a complete horrible person, he was always consistent. Everything he did was important and had meaning for his character, and it all worked in for the way his character's journey ended. So uh, he was a really well-written character. Dwight is probably one of if you look at his journey from when he first showed up in the story through all of the episodes and encounters we've seen with Dwight, he is probably the best written character possibly that the show has had, but um, he is one of the best written characters in the show right now at least. And Negan, I like the way his journey here has been understandable, and that's kind of what I didn't like so much about last episode, is where we're seeing Rick as just this murderer who's killing a bunch of people that saved him, and we didn't really see them do anything particularly wrong, even though they're with the saviors. So Rick is being a complete asshole, and yet we're humanizing Negan more and more and more. And to this point, Negan is understandable, even if what he wants to do is horrible, you can see where he's coming from. Um, so yeah, also I've... Rosita was a character that I used to not like, but over this season, I have grown to really like Rosita. Like I said, whenever Daryl or Michonne wanted to run off and do something reckless, Rosita was the voice of reason there. And I feel like even this episode, it was the same way where Rosita was a really good voice of reason. Even when she snapped, there was real purpose behind the words. And they made sense because all of those things about Eugene were totally true. Um, and yeah... I'm left to think, is Eugene too far gone? Is he full savior now? And Is Rick too far gone? Is he too much of an asshole to be the leader he needs to be? Uh, be the leader Carl wanted him to be? Now, obviously, he's the main character, so I think he's going to come around, but we have seen Rick fall a lot before, but I don't know if we've seen him fall this far into being just a really shitty person. So, uh... Yeah, I'd give this one 8.5 Trials by Combat out of 10, though, just because the stuff with Dwight and Simon was all really, really good. Um, so yeah, two episodes that it feels like they should have been in the middle of the season. It doesn't feel like we're ramping up toward a finale at all, especially the finale of All Out War. Um, I just think that 814 dropped thing did just drop the ball really, really hard. Um... I think 814 dropped the ball so hard that 815 tried to make up for it some, but it still leaves me like, uh, going into the finale where I don't really know where this is going to go, and not in the uh, shocking, positive way, but in the I don't know what they're going to do to handle this properly kind of way. 
So I guess we'll see what happens in the finale. Uh, sorry this was kind of negative, but yeah, I just really didn't like 8.14. <laughs> Um, and 813, I think, again, wasn't a great episode. It wasn't as bad as 814, but it wasn't a great episode. Um, so the season started off very, very strong. And then it just kind of has gone downhill a bit slowly throughout the back half of the season. Um, like I said, it seems like they didn't know what they were doing with Carl's death. They just said, oh, crap, we need to kill Carl off. And ever since they killed him off, they've just been winging it with a lot of the stories in the second half of the season. Um, so yeah, I have no idea what's going on right now. The story's kind of chaotic, and we'll, we'll see what, and again, not chaotic in the positive way of, oh my god, there's so much going on. So, uh, chaotic in the way of, there are some points that are kind of a mess all over the place. So, we're gonna see what happens in this final episode. I, I am, of course, still looking forward to it, because I love the show, but I, I don't know what they're doing. I'm confused, and you know my usual thing is that, I like to be positive about everything and find the good in everything. And even in 814, I found the good parts. I really liked a lot of it, um, even though I think they made some big mistakes. That's why I don't want the big mistakes to hold down the entire thing. Uh, so yeah, I really love the show. I'm just really concerned about a lot of the direction they're going. Um, but I guess that's it. I'll go try to get this video up. Either way, like if you did like the video, comment down there. Tell me what you thought of this. Um, these two episodes, I guess, what you thought of my thoughts on them. Subscribe for more. The Walking Dead, both comics and TV show. Um, follow on Twitter if you want. I can try to keep you updated there and stuff for the channel. If you want a link to the Discord server to talk with me or more of us there, just ask and I can give you a link to that. That's it. Thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you all next time.